If you want to walk about 11 miles with us today through the red rose city of Petra, well, this is the video for you. That's exactly where we're heading, to Petra in Jordan. Stay tuned. Shalom, and we thank you for joining us in this teaching as we visit a site actually in Jordan. You know, I usually introduce these videos by saying welcome as we visit a site in Israel because uh, that's our focus. We teach the Bible in the context of the land of the Bible. But, you know, technically, Jordan is also a land of the Bible. And today's visit is actually going to be one that includes about 11-mile hike. So I hope you brought your, your hiking shoes and your hiking poles and lots of water with you, maybe even a snicker bar or two, because we're heading right here to this site called Petra. Now, you can see that uh, we're east of Israel today, but all of this is Jordan. And uh, this site of Petra is located way down here, uh, well below the Dead Sea, which is here. So Petra, being one of the seven wonders of the world, is an amazing place to visit. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk in through the Seek or the canyon. We're going to then walk out to the most western part of the site of Petra. We're going to look into Israel, actually, the southern part of Israel. But before we return the same way out the Seek, we're going to get a great perspective from the high place. So I brought my camera along, and I hope that you did too, and we're going to have a great hike here in this Red Rose City, the ancient capital of the Nabataeans called Petra. So let's head out together. Welcome to the incredible site of Petra, located in the Seir mountain range, as mentioned in the Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 2. The descendants of Esau lived here. But later, at the end of the 4th century BC, Petra became the capital of the Nabataeans. So what we want to do is explore the site of Petra. And we begin by walking through the Seek or Canyon. This was the ancient entrance into the site. So we'll walk almost a mile in length. And along the way we'll see the water channel. We'll see carvings of various figures, camels and Nabataeans themselves. Here's a good picture on the left of the water channel. Directed water from the spring high above the site. The geological formations and the colors of the sandstone are quite incredible. As we near the end of the Seek, of course, the main attraction of Petra is what is called the Treasury. And here it comes in full view. Yes, indeed, the 1989 movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusades made this site quite famous. This is the treasury, 
It's about 120 feet high, and it probably served as the tomb for Aretas IV, the Nabataean king, who reigned from 9 BC to 40 AD. In fact, the Apostle Paul mentions King Aretas in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 32. Incidentally, the treasury was discovered in 1812 by Johann Ludwig Burkhardt. So now we continue into the site, seeing many Nabataean tombs cut out of the rock along the way. The culture and belief of the Nabataeans focused upon the afterlife. This is why archaeologists have found hundreds and hundreds of tombs so far. And of course, within the site today, there are many places where you can pick up a souvenir or a coffee. Each year, millions of visitors enjoy the site of Petra. This is why in 2007, Petra became one of the seven wonders of the world. Virtually everywhere you look, there is a Nabataean tomb. In 106 AD, the Romans took over the site from the Nabataeans and built this theater. Just across the theater are great examples of the colorful sandstone of Petra. Today, the Jordanian Bedouin play a very big part in the tourism of the site, offering camel rides and donkey rides as well. Now turning the corner and walking down what was an ancient Roman street, we now walk out to the western edge of the site of Petra. You can see that the Romans built a typical colonnaded street here in the early part of the second century. Our complete day will include about 11 miles of hiking in this incredible site. Our destination here will be the monastery tomb as we walk up over 800 steps to this second most attractive tomb of the Nabataeans. This was a first century Nabataean tomb, but later on used by the Byzantine Christians. Thus the name the monastery. Here at the monastery, we meet all kinds of new friends. Hey, buddy. (whistles) 
the traditional site of Aaron's tomb, the brother of Moses, is at the top of that peak. As we look now westward across the Arava into Israel. We'll get one last view of the monastery before we return back to the Roman street area and on to our last destination here at Petra, the high place. So we are going to take the back pathway up to the high place. Now with our destination in view, we'll pass by and even go into other tombs, such as this one, the soldier's tomb. Now our final ascent begins as we step by step make our way up to the high place. As we climb upward, we enjoy more spectacular views. And we finally made it to the high place where Dushara, the Nabataean god of the rock, was worshipped. Along with the donkey, we enjoy a beautiful view from this perspective. And by the way, it's not really a wise place to jump. Far below are the royal tombs of Petra. By the way, beyond that opening is where the monastery tomb is located. This means we covered a lot of distance today. Now from the high place we begin our descent down to the area of the Roman theater.
passing a few more camels on our way back, we'll get our last view once again of the treasury before walking out one more mile through the Seek. I hope you enjoyed this 11 mile hike in this amazing place called Petra. So maybe there's one three-letter word that describes this whole site, right? Wow. Wow. I mean, how else do you describe this, this place? One of the seven wonders of the world. From the, the walk into the Seek, through the city itself, to see one tomb after another is incredible. To see all the colors of the sandstone and to, of course, enjoy the, the culture of the Bedouins and even some people like the camel and the donkey rides. That is a part of the experience of Petra. But uh, I really am just always blown away about uh, who these Nabataeans were and uh, the amazing preparation they made for the afterlife. In fact, being at Petra many, many times, uh, I still can't get over how... No doubt they lived so modestly, but yet they prepared their whole life for the afterlife. That's sort of just the opposite, is it not, of our culture today. Uh, it seemingly appears to me that um, lots of people, they sort of push off thinking about the afterlife until, unfortunately, it's too late. People live for the moment. Our culture says, let me live right now. Let me enjoy life right this moment. And of course, we live in a very uh, microwave-ish, very cell phone-oriented lifestyle where we want things, we can order things instantly, and that's sort of how we live. We, we live for the day, if not the moment, and we sort of push off any thought about uh, what is in store for us after we take our last breath. Well, uh, we can be sure of our final destination uh, through a personal relationship with Christ. In fact, uh, this is a lesson that comes to me oftentimes when I visit Petra. Of course, their god was Dushara, uh, one of the gods that they worship, the god of the rock, if you will. Our god is the solid rock. He is the God of all. He is one who sent his son to die for us so that when we accept him in faith, uh, we can have eternal life in the afterlife. We don't have to worry about what's in store for us after we live this life out, uh, even to an old age. So I'm hoping that maybe a life lesson that we can take away from this video <clears throat> will be to understand how much God wants us to prepare for the afterlife, for everlasting life with him. For whoever believes in Jesus and accept him as Savior, as we repent of our sin and as we confess our need for him and even admit our inability to save ourselves, None of us are perfect. None of us are right. We have all fallen short of God's glory, his standard of perfection. And yet that's exactly why God sent his son 2,000 years ago to be righteousness for us, to give his life for us so that we may live eternally with him. Maybe today is a day for you to acknowledge your need for, for God, for Jesus. And maybe today is a day where you say, Lord, 
just like these Nabataeans prepared for the afterlife, uh, it's time for me to consider also my eternal life. And I profess my belief in you. I do repent of my sin and I turn to you. So give me that assurance of salvation and of course the assurance of eternal life with you. That's a great prayer uh, to make, isn't it, today, if you've not done that already. So Petra is a great site. I hope you agree. I hope you like the walk together with us. And uh, until next time, we'll, of course, adventure to some, some other place, uh, whether it be in Jordan or, uh, or in Israel. But uh, we are so glad that you joined us for this teaching from Petra. Take care and shalom, shalom.